We're going to hear from Jonathan Rizzo, KC3EEY of the University of Scranton. Um, and his poster is called Using a PVC Pipe Antenna and Raspberry Pi to Detect VLF Natural Radio. Hi, my name is Jonathan Rizzo, KC3EEY, VLF enthusiast and electrical engineering student at the University of Scranton. Low frequency natural radio is an exciting field to study and learn about. Naturally occurring radio emissions in the VLF band, such as spherics, whistlers, chorus, triggered emissions, and hiss, offer clues and hints to understanding the ionosphere magnetosphere and influence of solar weather on Earth. Detection of spherics allows for precise lightning location through the time group arrival method using a network of VLF receivers. While, while it is worthwhile to understand whistlers themselves, they can also be used as tools to understand the electron density of solar wind plasma along the whistler's propagation path. A rural chorus, often occurring alongside a rural displays can be a useful tool in understanding the aurora. Amateur radio operation can be done at VLF. At 8.27 kilohertz, often called a dreamer's band by the VLF community, continuous wave and a digital mode called coherent BPSK are used for communications over over thousand miles away, often at extremely low power levels. Successful transmissions of either continuous wave and messages from 5 to 100 characters have been done by amateurs within the past 10 years. As you can see here, for the transmission setups, the loading coils are quite large. VLF enthusiasts have been using VLF receivers for many years to listen to and record natural radio events. Power line interference has always been the enemy to VLF natural radio. So listeners would often have to venture out in remote areas, tens of miles away from power lines to be able to capture natural radio events. As of late, automated capture of VLF events is possible using a PC with the sound card as a VLF SDR, using open source software called VLF RX tools, written by VLF enthusiast Paul Nicholson. The software records the VLF signal GPS timestamps it, filters out the 50 or 60 hertz main sound with the tracking notch filter, detects whistler and chorus events, as well as sudden ionospheric disturbances through VLF transmitters, and allows for live listening and recording on a hard drive. Because VLF receivers require an earth ground for sensitivity, 50 or 60 hertz main sound can be injected into the receiver from a PC sound card or power supply. For VLF audio, a minimum of two audio isolation transformers are required to prevent main sum injection, but the VLF receiver still has to be powered by a battery. In this project, the VLF receiver is used as powered with a regular power supply. This simplifies the installation, allowing the use of a common Cat5 cable. This is made possible by an audio isolation transformer and an isolated DC to DC converter operating at a frequency much higher than the VLF band. The receiver can be constructed to fit inside a PVC pipe using foam pipe insulation with copper tape along the length of it for the antenna element. The foam insulation prevents the antenna assembly from becoming microphonic and having winds causing noise. At the other end, instead of using a PC and a sound card as the VLF SDR, a Raspberry Pi 3B with audio injector sound card is used for low power and compact VLF reception and analysis. The pulse per second output from a Trimble Res SMT360 GPS timing receiver connects to one channel of the sound card for signal timestamping as well as a GPIO pin for disciplining NTPD. VLF RX tools runs on the Pi and performs all automated functions of capturing, timestamping, filtering, event detection, recording, and streaming utilizing named circular buffers between various utility programs. It's very similar to the functionality of USGS Earthworm for seismic signal 
capture, event detection, and analysis. VLFRX tools creates the necessary data for further analysis of VLF events and visualization of data with GNU plot. This is an example of the VLF receiver mounted to a mast for production. I invite you to check out my poster for more details and links for further information and participation in VLF reception and amateur radio. And reach out if you have any questions. I'd like to thank Paul Nicholson for his VLF RX tool software, his technical assistance, and amazing contributions to myself for this project and the VLF community. I'd also like to thank the National Science Foundation and the University of Scranton for financial support of this project. Thank you, Jonathan. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, this is N0AX. I have a question. Um, the, uh, the Dreamers band, that sounds really kind of interesting. Um, of course, we've also got the 2200 meter band now and um, uh, 630. And um, I'm wondering if there is a, any group trying to measure, measure or receive the same thing on those three different frequencies to see what kind of correlation exists. Um, and second point is, I think it would be terrific if you would write up a summary article of these different phenomena that you can hear at VLF, and we can get that either in QST or QEX or someplace so that hams can learn what there is to listen to down there. Um, I, it's been a long time since there's been anything about that spectrum in QST for sure, but you've got a big community out there and it doesn't, you don't have to have a general or extra to, to listen. So um, that's a, a good possibility for bringing in more people. Um, to uh, answer your uh, first uh, question, um, as far as I know, I haven't, I, I was actually looking for that and I really didn't find anything. Um, but I'd be more interested to know about that. Um, last year, I was at uh, Tapper, and I did a presentation uh, on this, and I and I uh, uh, came with audio samples um, just to give people an idea of of what it of 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 what um, what to expect, and um, um, that's a good idea. Uh, once once uh, my school semester is over. I, I would I would really like to do that, if that's all possible. And there were a couple of comments on the chat about the uh, 1750 meter band, and um, uh, Dr. McDonald pointed out that the uh, the Sprite people. I assume she means um, uh, associated with thunderstorms. Uh, the Sprite people have a great Facebook group, so all sorts of interesting resources for you. Yeah, um, on the um, on the uh, uh, VLF uh, group on Yahoo groups now groups.io, um, there were a number of people who who did uh, research on sprites, and what they wanted to do was they wanted to correlate any VLF activity with sprite activity. Um, there was a fellow, um, I I forget his uh, website, but he would he would. Um, uh, take a, a lot of pictures and and his 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 goal was to see if there was any correlation um, between that and any VLF and uh, any any sort of VLF activity um, but from what I could remember uh, he didn't really f f find anything there were some leads but he he uh, didn't really f find anything okay and the uh, MSK 144 mode um, that's part of the WSJT package um, is optimized for meteor scatter, but um, it might be possible to use that on the low the low VLF and LF bands to um, look for transient uh, phenomena. I mean, you could possibly you could possibly even bounce uh, signals off of sprites, but that's a that's a different frequency package. Well, um, what I would invite you to do is I would invite you to uh, check out 
my poster, there's a link to Paul Nicholson's website um, and his uh, software, VLFRX Tools. And okay. um, there's an application for um, Meteor Scatter there, um, although that I uh, did not investigate. Okay, thanks. Um, Jonathan, I think your talk that you gave at Tapper, um, if you just wrote that into a paper, I think that would uh, fill uh, what Ward is saying. I think you basically just start with your Tapper talk and that would make a great manuscript. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Um, I could probably also um, uh, put, put a, a little bit more into the final documentation of my senior project and um, that, could, that could kind of encompass everything. That'd be great. I think Liz has a question. Actually, I was just pointing out the Sprite group and I do know folks there that take VLF observations with Sprites. So there's a lot of potential there if that's an area of future interest. Um, and uh, yeah, whatever the next steps for this project are, maybe that's something you want to talk more about if there's time. I don't know. Um, is there time? Yes, you have four minutes. Okay. Um, when I remember that fellow, uh, when, when he was doing um, a capture of sprites, he actually got some, some, some really good um, pictures. Um, and there was, there was talk about, um, from what I could remember, I believe um, th that uh, um, there, there was talk about whether um, uh, if, if uh, sprites actually um, caused whistlers or, or had an influence on, on uh, whistler propagation. Um, and I thought that was interesting um, because since not much is known about sprites, I was, I was really curious about the radio signature, you know, what's going on and could, could that, cause could that cause whistlers and um uh that that definitely piqued my interest and uh it's it's uh, definitely something that i'm going to investigate in the future wonderful any final questions for jonathan all right well thank you so much jonathan that was a wonderful presentation thank you